Good day and welcome to the next installment in our Tableau custom chart series here on the Super Data Science YouTube channel. Today we're tackling the pie gauge chart in Tableau. Quite a nifty looking chart even I have to say myself. Um, maybe not the best to compare um, all of your different dimensions and metrics but um, definitely a, a one that catches the eye of your, of your audience. So what we are doing is, um, well, first maybe some credit to Tuan Haong. He has created this method and I have adjusted it for our own example over here. And hopefully you would find this method quite nice. Okay, well, that's what it looks like. And if we jump into the data that we'll be doing and what we'll be building in as such, um, the data once again is available on the Super Data Science site. As always, the link you'll find below. This is basically a CSV file, and um, this data comes from the Kaggle Machine Learning and Data Science Survey done here in 2017. And um, this is specifically looking at one question that was asked. It's, um, you know, all of the respondents were asked what tools do they use in their day-to-day -day work as a data scientist. And um, these are the percentages of responses, and you can see um, that the majority said they use Python, some use R, SQL, Jupyter Notebook, TensorFlow, AWS. I've only taken the, the, the top six. I haven't taken more all of them. There are obviously more of them. So what you'll see is um, that obviously the totals don't tie up as more than one option could have been selected, but this indicates the actual percentage of um, uh, respondents that have selected this as one tool that they do use. So this is the percentage and the order is just for us to help build our chart. Let's jump right into it. Let's open up a new instance of Tableau connect to our CSV file by using the text file and the survey data. You can see it imports correctly. We've got the responses and the order. What we also need to do, um, seeing as we'll be drawing a uh, you know, polygon, we need to duplicate the data or by using a union. So we can just draw this file onto itself. It would obviously now create, as you can see, the duplicates. And we need a calculated field over here. So we, as we are gonna, like I say, be drawing a couple of points, we just need to have a path field. And the path field is as straightforward as saying, you know, we'll just use the IE function. If the table name is equal, and we'll just use the actual first table name. So if it is equal to survey data, which is the first copy of that, as you can see, then we need to give the path a one. Alternatively, the path becomes 271. And as straightforward as that, then we've got the path field. Right, now we can jump into our sheet. So for that, what we'll now be doing is, um, seeing as we've got the, the path, we need to create bins of that. We need multiple uh, points on it. So we'll just create bins from our path. As straightforward as saying, okay, well, our above size of bins is one. So that'll take us from one to 271. We can just hit okay. And next we need to create a couple of other uh, calculated fields as well. Just stick with me, this is the, perhaps the boring part, but it will all come together. Firstly, we need to calculate the percentage. Now the percentage, we know this, this is different to the number of respondents, but this is the percentage of the pie chart that we'll, of the, sorry, not of the pie chart, but of the actual gauge chart we'll be completing. And how we need to do that is when we look at our data, we see the maximum was 76.3. So we need to take the value, so the response in essence, and divide that by the 76.3. Because um, obviously the outer circle being the Python, we want to have all the way completed, um, but the rest as a percentage of that. So firstly we use percentage, and then a couple of others. So firstly we'll create index. Now the index is the different points on, on our chart. So uh, you can just follow along by typing these out. So we'll use the index and we'll just minus one times two. All right, that's fine. And we'll next be creating another one, which we'll just call WC pi. And that is a table calculation that represents the pi function. And for that, we'll use window max and we'll say it's the maximum. So if we use the maximum function of by uh, right like that cool and we hit apply and next we'll just create another one so wc pi was it now we do wc start so wc start uh, sorry let me just get back to there so what wc start let's just write it out 
Um, WC star is in essence the table calculation for the individual lines which we'll be drawing. And again here we use the window max function and we'll work with the max of order. As you remember from our table we had the order as well. And we can hit apply. So obviously to draw the, the lines. And next one is WC percentage. Now that obviously is used to um, show the percentage of the bar that needs to be completed versus the maximum. So to do that again, window max, sorry, not window average, window max function. And for the window max function, we'll just be saying maximum of the percentage, which we just created as well. Next, we'll create the um, X point, which is what we'll be drawing. And I've already created this in a text file. Uh, it's quite a lengthy um, formula. So what we'll do is we'll just paste it. You can pause the video here and, and copy it, but I'll just explain to you quickly. So the X value, if it's less than 270, we're drawing the outer line, oh, sorry, the inner line of the, um, yeah, the arrow we'll be drawing. If it's greater than 270, we're drawing the outer line. And if it's equal to, or well, for the rest of it, it is um, basically the tip of the arrow. So I'll hit OK there and also create the Y, which is basically the same. However, we won't be using the sine function, but the actual cos function. So you can just replace those. The rest stays exactly the same. And you can hit OK. And now we start with the fun part. We will take the bins we've created and put that in the detail shelf and take the X and Y values, respectively putting them in the columns and row shelf. Remember to change this compute using to the new bin we've created. Um, there we go, we do the same for Y. And our, our chart starts looking like something. Um, but before we yeah, get to it looking great, we'll first change it to polygon as we'll be using a polygon and it'll change us all up again. But let's let's fix it to look, at, look right again. We'll take the index and put that on the path shelf. And there's one big arrow with all of our results in. And to break it up, we'll obviously just use the description and put that in color. And voila, that is our radial gauge chart. Uh, quite easy to create, don't you think? Um, but we will also just tidy it up a little bit. Um, maybe starting off by adding a little label, because at the moment we've got these tooltips, but I think it would look much better if we actually have the label inside of the chart. To do that, we need another calculated field. We'll call it Y2. And um, we basically just set it to WC start plus 0 0.5. Oh, my bad. WC start plus 0 0.5. All right, and hit OK. Then we move the Y2 value to rows. And again, our chart is going to look strange all of a sudden. But we need to ensure that we. Um, Firstly, make this a uh, dual axis chart. So we'll just change this and make this dual axis. And everything would disappear all of a sudden. But we'll also just make sure that this index over here is set to calculate across the actual uh, table. Okay. We um, also need to ensure that we sync the axes. Uh, sorry, right click over there and sync the axes. And then also just remove the um, measure names from the color, um, which was now created when we added the Y2 value. And we're back to our original graph. Okay. Now we will just take the um, Y2 value and um, change it firstly, not from a, poly to a polygon, from a polygon to a circle, because we want to have um, it nicely rounded off. And we can also just put the label, um, which is the description, um, which was the, the responses onto the label over there. There we go. Okay, and now we'll just tidy it up and make it look better. So firstly, let's us change the um, the lines and uh, yeah, all the lines and borders and so forth by just unticking them once again, um, making sure they all disappear. And we'll do the same for these grid lines. Just a tedious process always, but it's worth it in the end. Um, we will also just quickly hide all of the um, axes. Let's just show, remove headers. Uh, there we go. We can also uh, just remove our title for now. We don't need to put a title in this case. Um, we also didn't hide those nulls. And now we can actually edit the rest of our chart. We'll start off by taking um, the size over here and increasing it a little bit to make it look 
in line with the actual line and give it a nice rounded um, look at the start. Uh, it's a bit of a hack and you need to uh, find the right spot, but as soon as it is properly aligned, let's just try it once more. There we go, there it looks good. So now you can see it's nicely rounded off by just using um, the circle as such in there. All right, next we would actually be going and changing the labels and to edit the label, we will quickly hit the air and say the label needs to be aligned to the left, but also in the middle. And we can also just change this and make it perhaps a bold and increase the size a little bit, 11 perhaps, and hit okay. There we go. What we could also add in is the actual percentage. Um, I'm actually gonna start off by removing the tooltip. I think the tooltip doesn't, the tooltip doesn't add any value in here. You can hit okay. But let's actually go and put in the response, which was the actual percentage into the label field as well. And just to tidy that up once again, we will perhaps just, um, let's see, put it next to each other to see what it looks like. We'll add a percentage in there and we'll move it to the top line. Make it not bold. Um, and there we go. Maybe just, let's change the actual, yeah, sorry, uh, the response over there. Let's just change the formatting to have only one decimal place because Actually, zero decimal places looks even better. And that's our chart. And as a finishing touch, what we could do, as always, to make it stand out a little bit better is to format the actual background of the chart. So we can just format and change it to black, make it stand out. And automatically, the colors change to white. And that is our chart. Um, I think that looks great. You could even play around with the colors a bit more if you wanted um, by changing a different color scheme, for instance, like summer. Let's say assign palette and apply. You can do something like this. Obviously, it's up to you. Even the, uh, the green, orange, teal colors might look great. Whichever you prefer, that is our chart, our radial gauge chart. All right, well, I hope you had fun learning this new kind of chart. Um, it's not too difficult, so go and apply to your own work. And um, as always, keep, stay tuned to our YouTube channel and um, look out for more content go and register and until we meet again next time 